What's up everyone, Mr. Rankin back for another video. Uh, what we're gonna do today, a little bit different, we're gonna do a little bit of a tutorial of Photop. Photop is just a generic version of Photoshop. Uh, any any device can get on it. You just open a web browser, go to photop.com. Uh, I just wanna go over some of the basics. So for the basics, uh, up here on the top, you have file, edit, image. These are your, just your, your menu bar. It's got all your different adjustment tools. Um, you, know, you can adjust the colors, layers, you can adjust the layers. Um, select selects tool is where you can select certain parts of an image and you can you know delete things you can refine the edge of things this is how you crop things out um, so that's just your menu bar over here is your toolbar these are all the tools you use you got the move tool you've got these selection tools uh, cropping tools you got the brush tool stamp tool gradient tool text tool um, and when you click on each one of these uh, below the menu bar there is a tools bar uh, tools menu bar basically and this is where you can come in and select different set settings So I always like to use the transform controls. I always like to have that selected when I'm using the move tool um, So if we edit we added a picture we can move it around and we can adjust the size without having to go up to edit and use transform controls Over here on the bottom right. Um, we have the layers bar uh, Menu layers menu is this is when you add images you, you'll have they'll it'll just stack them up up top to bottom and if it's on top that just means it's in the front if it's down low that means it's in the back and you'll be able to adjust like what what pictures in front of what uh, you have a history there's a and this where you can just like if you do something so if I do any kind of editing say I use the gradient bar I had a gradient and I don't like what I did I could just go and hit the thing above it on open and it'll undo but what if I want to redo I can click so every time you do something say you just keep testing out all these different settings till you find the perfect one you can always go back as far as you want um, so that's the history bar um, there's some more menu things over here. This is mainly for when you're using text. Um, if I come in here, I got my brush tools, characters. You can adjust uh, the style of your your text and your in your fonts and, and the the spacing in between. Um, so a lot of different menus. I think these things can be very confusing. So I'm just going to show you guys very basics. Uh, copy and paste an image. Uh, add a background. Add some text, and we'll call it good. All right, first thing you're going to want to do is just go new project. Uh, you guys have some presets here. Um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and set the size. Uh, 1280 by 720 should be decent size. Uh, if you want to do something a little bit more vertical, you can just swap those two. But we just click this create button here. And here we go. Uh, now what we want to do, because we're just manipulating photos, we're going to steal some photographs from the internet. So I'm just going to go up in the top here, hit a new tab. I'm just going to do a Google search <coughs> of PNG files. Why PNG files? Because they're already uh, cropped out images. There's no background, so we don't have to do any cropping. So it just makes it easy. So if I want a picture of Iron Man, I uh, just type in Iron Man PNG and I'll go to images and then try to find one that does not have a background. Now, normally what you want to do is look for one that has a blank background. And when you click on it, it's going to have this tile checker pattern behind it. That tells you that it's an actual PNG file. So if I want to go ahead and incorporate this, I'm going to right click and hit uh, copy image. Now I'm just going to go back into photo P and I'm going to hit control V as in Victor. And what you're going to notice here, I can come in and move it around. All right. From what I read online, uh, sometimes when you copy and paste an image, uh, it'll give you a black background. I believe it's a windows issue. Uh, but if you're working on a Chromebook or something else, uh, it should just give you a blank background, uh, to work around this hole where we have a black background, we can do one of two things. Uh, we can come over here and we can click on this little magic wand and we can go and we can delete out all the black um, Sometimes that can be very tedious uh, and you don't want to do that uh, So what I usually do is instead of copying and paste what I'll do is go back to the image and I will go save image as I will then go and save this to my downloads folder uh, Just hit save and then I'll come back into photo P. I'll go up to file and I will hit open and place uh, under over in place I just find the file that was in my downloads folder double click on it and now it's an actual PNG file from what I've read something about with Windows um, sometimes when you copy an image it doesn't copy the whole image and so it ignores that's a it's a PNG file and it loses that transparency so it automatically just gives it a background and so the auto is black um, so now we have a transparent Iron Man. We can come in and you can click on the top corners as you're already here. I like to hold the shift button down and it allows me to adjust the size without, you know, any warping. 
Um, so hold the shift button down and then we can go and move this around and voila. Ah, I'm just going to keep on adding some images. So I'm just going to keep going to the internet. Maybe this time I want to add Hulk. Just going to make my own little wallpaper. Come in here and find one that's this. And it's got that checker thing again. I'm going to right click, save image as, save it to the computer, back into photo P, go up to file, open and place, find Hulk. And yet again, I can shrink this down. And we can add as many as we want. All right, so that's just adding images 101. So right now I have a white background. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and add a background. So I gotta figure out what it is I want in the background. So if I just want a background color, I can just, you know, type in background color and it'll come up with all, you know, Google's got everything you can think of. Um, so let's say I like this one right here, this little sparkly effect, or I like this thing. You know, it's got some cool colors to it. I'm going to actually just copy paste because this one doesn't need to be a PNG file. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to hit control V to paste. And there's my background. I'm going to want to go ahead and resize this. So I'm going to click on the move tool up here and under move tool, I'm going to click this little box that says transform controls. That will allow me to have the little options to come and adjust the size of this. So I want to shrink this down and fit the corners and then I'm going to move my layer over here on the side down to the bottom and so now it's behind. I'm going to go over here to the move tool. I'm just going to go and start adjusting each one of these. Just click on each one and I'm going to slowly just start to move things about and from here I'm just going to keep on adding more images. Cause I can't see you anywhere Just like that, all your images after all that hard work, moving them around, changing the size, location, shape, uh, you've created your own poster. When you're done, just go up to file, save as PSD, or you can export it as a JPEG. PSD keeps it a Photoshop file so that it keeps the layers all intact so you can do more editing later. Uh, if you export as a, you know, a PNG, like I said, you want some issues, you'll, you won't have a background. And if you save it as a JPEG, uh, then it'll just be a flat image um, so you can just upload it to any of the social media uh, of your choosing all right that's a wrap thanks for watching don't forget to drop a like subscribe if you like this content you want me to continue doing tutorials of all sorts of different things uh, i like using photo P just because it's a free uh, version of photoshop you can use it on any device you don't have to download anything you don't have to install anything uh, the only mishaps that you have with it is if it crashes, it, you lose all your stuff. So I always like to just, as I'm editing, if I'm doing a lot of work, uh, I'll just save as PSD um, every five, 10 minutes and just to play it safe so you don't lose all the work you've done. Until the next time, happy creating.